Okay, here we have sine square x times cosecant x times secant x. And the good old strategy is let's work with sine and cosine only, right? So for the sine square x, that's good. We'll just write it down as how it is, sine square x. And then we see that here we have cosecant x. And what to remember, what's an identity for cosecant x? This right here is the same as 1 over sine x. And once again, we have to know these kind of things really, really well, right? And next, we have to multiply the secant x. And for secant x, this is the same as 1 over cosine x, okay? And for all these three things right here, they are all multiplying. And now let's see what we can do with this. For the sine square x, when the notation is written this way, this means we have sine x times another one, okay, times another sine x. And I purposely wrote this down like this so that I can show you this sine x can be cancelled with this sine x in the denominator, so we can just cross them out. And altogether, that's what we can do, and we will see that sine x on the top only, times 1 times 1, just sine x, right? Over this cosine x on the bottom, so let's just put that down. And what's sine x over cosine x? Well, this is the same as saying we have tangent x. This right here is the simplest that we can get, and that's choice B that we can see right here. And that's it.